Hey guys, YOLO! Welcome to YOLO Life Questions. This week, we're gonna focus on marriage, so we went around asking a few questions about marriage. What are some of the reasons for marriage failures? Reasons for marriage success. the bond within families and how can we avoid all these broken families around the world. We try to focus on whether to introduce a nine months course is good to help people in marriages to last much longer. So tune in and watch and listen to what people say. I think it's really a very good idea of having marriage counseling usually for like this type in this type of times usually couples tend to wander away so many times but if we give a focused direction on how a couple needs to be together in God this type of training is really important for them not only for them to grow as one but a lot to like no even they can see the others may see them also how they are and they may try to change and bring an influence among the people they meet and all of them. There should be a chance for those who are planning to marry or getting married to have a great understanding of what marriage is because marriage was designed to be a one-to-one -one relation. There should not be anything more than that. And that is the point which we always miss. People end up in the marriage having some other relationship which are unknown to the partner. And at the end, everything is messed up and uh, they end up divorcing, which affects the life of the children which have been begotten in the relationship. And we end up having so many headaches and so many criminals and filling up the prison with no result whatsoever. So having the answer, that will be a very nice and uh, pretty good idea. Je trouve que la raison de la réussite de certains mariages ou de, de toutes choses, c'est tout commence par une préparation. Tout, tout commence par une très bonne préparation. Euh, le mariage, après avoir découvert, parce qu'avant je ne savais pas, était en fait une institution, un contrat consigné. Un contrat consigné pour rester ensemble. C'était au-delà des émotions. C'était au-delà de tout ce qui allait arriver. C'était un contrat que vous devez à tout prix respecter, quelles que soient les circonstances. Et ça quitte vraiment le, ça quitte, ça quitte vraiment le niveau de simple relation amoureuse. Ça va plus à une relation très, euh, très sérieuse, dans le sens où ça vous lie pour toute la vie jusqu'à jusqu ce que Dieu vous sépare. Alors pour ce genre de décision, moi je trouve que pour moi ce que je ferais avant de, de me marier, afin que mon mariage puisse réussir, Je, je prendrai le temps de me préparer spirituellement, intellectuellement et physiquement. Je, prends, je prendrai le temps de définir ma vision spirituelle, intellectuelle et physique. Euh, je prendrai le temps d'observer euh, des femmes ou une femme qui a de même vision que moi. Parce que je trouve que ce qui maintient, c'est la seule chose qui peut maintenir des gens. Euh, long, pendant longtemps dans une, euh, dans, par exemple, en relation ou dans un même toit, sous un même toit, c'est la vision. Parce que il est bien écrit dans les proverbes que uh, where there is no vision, people perish. And the marriage has to have a, uh, a, a, a particular uh, vision that both the couple, about the person, including the couple, uh, uh, you know, are involved in it. Alors, si notre mariage a une vision, si mon mariage a une vision très particulière qui peut s'étendre sur 15 ans, 10 ans, ou 
qui peut être renouvelé après 10 ans, après 15 ans, après 20 ans, après 30 ans, après 50 ans, jusqu'à ce que même nous mourons et que nous naissons une legacy. Je really apprécie vraiment l'idée que nous devons avoir un certain période de training avant le mariage. Mais, par exemple, nous faisons des entraînements pour le baptisme, ceux qui veulent participer au baptisme, ceux qui veulent être baptisés. We have classes for a certain period of time. So likewise, we can also ask and uh, we can also start training those who want to uh, get married in a particular period of time. For example, you have told nine months. I don't think for uh, our country this nine months is really suitable. Okay. And uh, it would be uh, cut short into uh, either uh, like uh, one to three months period. That would be nice. If you really want to uh, have uh, this family, you don't need even a preacher to uh, preach, but the way you live uh, is uh, already speaking to the <coughs> neighborhood. So, uh, yeah, mar <coughs> for this marriage, you really need to think because the Bible also teaches and even Paul warns us that not everyone is called for this. Some are called for this, some are called for that, he is mentioning. So, not everyone is called for the marriage that we really need to understand. La durée du mariage dépend beaucoup plus de la qualité de personnes qui sont incluses dans les mariages. Euh, tout comme la durée d'une chose dépend de la qualité de la chose. Je trouve que il est très très important d'être bien préparé à prendre la décision, d'avoir de bonnes informations et beaucoup plus de vraies informations et de se donner à 100% d'un mariage. Parce que quand on se donne à 50%, ça veut dire qu'on ouvre une petite, qu'on laisse 50% pour voir ailleurs et pour détruire le mariage. Et dernièrement, j'étais en train de suivre, euh, je crois, une prédication et j'ai entendu euh, une chose qui m'a vraiment beaucoup tourmenté. Comment pourrais-tu pourrais chercher un bon mariage pour vouloir que ton mariage réussisse en même temps tromper ta femme <rire> J'ai compris que c'était totalement... C'est impossible C'est impossible de vouloir réussir dans le mariage et de tromper ta fri... Tricher euh, Il est alors très important d'être avec... d'être... très... d'être mature. Pas seulement dans la connaissance de, de la vie, mais aussi dans la connaissance de Dieu. Parce que les circonstances et les situations qui arrivent, qui peuvent bouger le mariage, le couple à un moment, euh, ne dépend pas toujours de personnes non plus. Peut aussi aller au-delà de leur imagination, de leur réflexion. Tout comme il y a des circonstances que les hommes ne peuvent pas contrôler. Alors Dieu peut être un très grand soutien dans le mariage. Ce que beaucoup de gens ont beaucoup, ont, ont beaucoup oublié, c'est qu'il n'y a pas que deux personnes dans le mariage, il y en a trois. Il y a Dieu qui est témoin. Parce que ce mariage s'est fait aussi de manière religieuse. Ça veut dire que c'est devant Dieu qui est témoin de l'alliance entre les deux personnes. Alors il est aussi témoin de tout ce qui peut se passer dedans. Il est le seul soutien dans le mariage. C'est le seul qui peut, qui peut euh, permettre au couple de s'entendre, de comprendre le caractère de chacun et qui peut former chacun à devenir exactement ce que l'autre veut qu'il soit, ce que l'autre euh, voulait qu'il soit. And so I think that um, the church is supposed to be very much interested in training its young ones to understand the basis of marriage before they enter into it. And this training, um, the nine months as proposed, is it's good. And, and But it shouldn't become the general thing which people will just go through to gain certificates and then move on. It should be so <coughs> natural that um, in our sermons, during some of the Sabbaths, during some of the weekday services, some of the time is devoted to um, Training, uh, to teaching some of these things because at the end of the day it is <clears throat> the families that are built in the church they are the people who are going to transform the church and then make the church better and about the country um, going about this you know in a country we have different religions we have different societies we have people with different ideologies and people are entering into marriage for several reasons some enter, enter into marriage as a form of a social contract some also enter into marriage um, just for 
some fame or for, for the fun of it. Well, it's the spring equinox when our ancestors celebrated Istra, the goddess of the dawn and her renewal of life on earth. And Easter is still a season for marriage and a tradition that Kate and William are following. But these days it seems the glitz and glitter of the big day is given more thought than the marriage itself. And many young couples now say they can't afford to get married. So have we lost the true meaning of marriage? If you go into the social magazines, you can see that at the, at the center of it, it's all about the dress, where it's happening, and who's got the invite. Not whether it's going to last or not. Well, I haven't seen many of my bride and grooms who've gone into it thinking it's not, absolutely not. And that's the whole reason why so much is put into the day and there's so much of, pressure. 30% of couples get into debt after the wedding day, you know, is that a good start? I believe that weddings are, wedding days are all about timing and each person goes into the day with the right at the right time mm. and if it happens that they've made decisions to spoil themselves on certain parts of the wedding. Mm. Yeah. So I mean I know you think there's a certain to, you, you, it's, it's a lot isn't it? I know you think there's a certain taboo. There's something that people yes, are there's... afraid to say about the true meaning of marriage. Say it to us now. Well I think that what we have is a culture where it has now become taboo to say that the ideal marriage is between a man and a woman. And I think that, you know, I, I shared a car coming here with Peter and, um, and I, you know, and I think that his position on uh, gay marriage is, is absolutely valid. I think that they can have a, a civil union, a civil partnership, and I think that's fine. But I think the ideal marriage is still between a man and a woman, they have children, and, um, and they're, they're committed to one another forever. And I think that it's a shame that that has become, you know, a no-go area for people to talk about. I think, you know, love and commitment... Well, I thought you might come in. <laughs> <laughs> love and commitment can take many different forms, and I think there's, there's no evidence that love and commitment between people of the same sex uh, relationship is any better or worse than that between people of other sex. But you want... You want to keep, you get marriage should be kept as something very special for something that, which happens between a man and a woman. That's what you think. That's what you think. Yeah, I think I think that if Peter wants to live with somebody and have that uh, become a union, that's absolutely fine. A legal union, absolutely fine. But as as a sacrament to be you know to be celebrated in a church, I think that that is still the traditional man and woman. Um, and, and I think it's, it's beautiful, right. and I think it is, you it is holy. You have explain why you think that has to be. I'm a gay man, I'm in a civil partnership. I don't see why marriage cannot apply to same-sex couples as to opposite-sex couples. I agree with Peter. No, it's, about, it's about the of love and the relationship and intimacy that two people wish to form between themselves. Marriage, absolutely fine. But I think that if you are saying to me that you, are, that you have a right to have your marriage uh, consecrated in a church. I, I have difficulty with that because I think that in, our, in my church, in the Catholic church, um, I wasn't allowed to have my marriage consecrated in church because I was married to a divorced man. And I accepted that because those are the rules of that church. And, and quite frankly, I stand by my decision to have married a divorced man. But I would expect you to stand by your decision to you know, be with a, a, a man and not force that onto my church or no, onto on. any church. Oh, no, 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 uh, so that this could be, could it, the regeneration of marriage, the renaissance of marriage, and it's not about just dressing up on the day. This is about people, whatever their gender, whatever their sex, who just want to show commitment to each other for life. So this could be the best thing that ever happened to marriage. I think the best thing that ever happened to marriage is love. And in all... <laughs> That's, that's what I was trying to say, but I was just waffling on. And you said it, and you said it so much better. Oh, well, thank you. Um, the problem is that marriage has been turned into an industry. It has become commercialised. And whilst I have no problem with, with the nature of that, we live in a free society and people will do what they will with it, what has suffered profoundly is the understanding of love. And so for such people, and even some even enter into marriage just to have a legal child or some legalization in some country or in something that they do. And so um, if the 
the, the countries are really interested in building stronger families, then there should be some sort of legalization on what a real marriage is and what other social contracts should be so that people can choose to go into other social contracts which will not be considered as marriage. But when it comes to marriage, then it should be based on one particular thing that the nation gives on it. If not so, then it will be very difficult to bring people together to train them because there is somebody who needs only just to stay with a partner for um, two years. He doesn't need one, nine months of study because his, his objective is different from somebody who wants to have a long-term relationship. And so, uh, the ways you told that with your fiance you can attend these trainings, I would suggest that those who are willing to get married, those who have interest to, uh, towards marriage, they should also get trained because we should need to know what kind of person you want and like uh, what Bible suggests towards this. Because once you are already determined that this is the person you are going to get married, you are left with no choice means you are accepting that person as your partner and uh, you need, uh, even though the teachings tell some different things you are not in a position to uh, reject uh, that uh, selected person so uh, I should uh, suggest that it should start even before uh, you are selecting the fiancé uh, Avant de devenir ingénieur on prend des cours de 4 ans de, de tutes ce n'est pas aussi pour rien, c'est très important uh, d'être uh, tout comme on pouvait nous donner de la matière brute et nous pouvons travailler par nous-mêmes. Vu qu'il y a des gens qui ont eu des expériences déjà, qui sont expérimentés et qui peuvent facilement euh, appliquer la sagesse de Dieu ou euh, euh, comment dire, transformer la, la sagesse biblique en une sagesse applicable dans le couple, genre euh, avoir des révélations et tout. Il est très important que le couple puisse avoir des conseils de ceux-là qui ont expérimenté beaucoup de qui a fait beaucoup de temps dans le mariage. Euh, sans, aussi, sans oublier que avant de se lancer dans un domaine dans lequel les autres se sont déjà lancés, il est très important de prendre le temps de, euh, de prendre conseil. That's why in, 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 the local, in the local settings, when the, the marriage is being done in a home, then the, the community leaders we take this marriage in the court, local court, and a certificate is given to, to endorse the, their support. So the government is hard and is still playing a vital role to see that society comes together. Because they themselves know that um, if the law is not binding, anyone will walk out as an at will. But when government has set those communities that any time a marriage is being done, it's organized at home or in the community, the local court will issue a certificate endorsing their support. So in that case, that the marriage is secured. So government itself is always doing every effort to make sure marriages work. Even in the Christian home or religious setting, the government makes sure that you register that marriage under oath, under law, so that they, 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 there is perfect decorum in the community, there is perfect uh, peace in the community, there is perfect unity in the community, there is perfect cohesion in the community. Rest in peace.